Hong Kong. What do we know about this place? Maybe that it was a British colony until 1997, and maybe all the stuff that's happened since. But instead of getting bogged down over some depressing politics, let's talk about something else. Airports. No, not their existing airports, and not really about the old one either. But to put the story into context, we first need to understand the old one, Kai Tak. So let's get that out of the way. Now, even if you're not an airplane nerd yourself, you may have at least seen the airport in movies and documentaries. But for those who don't know, Kai Tak is Hong Kong's old airport, located in the middle of the city. The airport is known to be difficult to land at, not only because pilots would have to make an unusually sharp turn at low altitude, but also because of the thousands of people that live underneath who would like to kindly urge them not to screw up. The approach earned its nickname the Kai Tak Heart Attack, and forever lives in the flight simulator community as something show-offs and loners would flex about. But as you can see, I nailed it. At this point, you may be wondering who thought it was a good idea to keep an airport in the middle of the city, and why didn't the government try to replace it well before it became what it was? Well, the fact of the matter was, they did. They tried, quite a few times actually, and two of those plans nearly became a reality. Had either of them worked, the Kai Tak heart attack, all these scenes, and the old airport that we all know and love would have never existed. And this brings us to the main story. The two airport plans that nearly replaced Kai Tak almost 50 years before his long overdue retirement. The airport plans of Ping San and Deep Bay. Back in the 1920s, the then British Hong Kong looked for a place to keep their new fangled things called airplanes. So they chose an empty field nearby, and that field happened to be Kai Tak. This was done so out of convenience, back before many considerations were made about safety and future expansions. In fact, not long after they began commercial flights, the government knew it was already too small and dangerous. Sounds familiar? The only thing was, before they could pick a new spot to replace it, Hong Kong ran into a bit of a problem. World War II. The city was captured by the Japanese so it can become their strategic port and for the Americans bombed the living crap out of before crawling out from under at the war's end with the British regaining control of the colony. With Hong Kong in a broken state, the government believed it was high time to build a new airport. And unlike the old Kai Tak, they would look for a spot that's further away from the city while also making sure that it was large enough to accommodate for future expansions. To make this happen, the government wants support from the local airlines and the British Royal Air Force, or the RAF, since they'll be the ones who will need to move out of the old airport. Plus, getting support from both civilian and military parties would mean that they can split the cost. Two birds, one stone. And it worked. With support from the two, in 1946, the government settled on a spot near the edge of the colony, Ping San. At the time, the land was undeveloped, unlike the rest of Hong Kong, and was flat enough to build an airport with ease. Sure, there were some tall mountains to the east and west, plus some villagers are in the way, but I'm sure they won't matter. There, they began designing a new airport, one that would feature a runway about 6,000 feet long with the anticipation of an expansion to about 9,000 feet. And to build the airport, teams from the RAF were recruited for the job. Since they already had plenty of experience building airfields around the world during the war, they made quick work of the project, surveying the land, starting a quarry nearby, and training local workers at such a pace. They promised the first phase of the airport will be finished in just five months. Who's that? Oh, it's China. Apparently, the villagers told China about how pissed they would be if they lost their homes, and they would like the project to stop. Now, it sounds odd that the Chinese government would like a word on what seems to be a foreign project on foreign lands. But here's the catch. The project is located in a part of Hong Kong known as the New Territories. Unlike the rest of Hong Kong, the British doesn't technically own this land, but instead leased it from China for 99 years. And forcefully taking land from the locals would actually violate the lease agreement. <clears throat> Well, okay. 
Guess we can slow down for now as we talk it out, but it's not going to stop us from finishing Pingsan. Not only is the RAF anxious about getting out of Kai Tak, so are the airlines and the rest of Hong Kong. It's going to happen, guys. So quit causing a scene and let's finish. Who's it now? Oh, it's BOAC, Britain's supreme leader of airlines. And they're quite upset after having to walk the long way around the mountain to inspect the site because, you know, freeways weren't a thing yet. Not only that, they were going on about the lack of water around the site, meaning their flying boats would be useless, and they also found the mountains to the east and west to be quite concerning. That doesn't look good. At a time when the industry was starting to realize that international safety standards might be a good idea. So BOAC and the civil industry withdrew their support, leaving behind the RAF to support the project alone who also left soon after. Well, that sucks. But Hong Kong still needs a new airport. They don't want the old Kai Tak. They know it's too tiny and it's too dangerous. They're determined to build a new airport. So suddenly, they're hard at work again, looking around left and right for another site, and they soon narrow down their list to two options, Stonecutters Island and Deep Bay. Stonecutters Island is an attractive site since it is close but not too close to the city while also being in the lands that the British formerly owned and not leased, meaning the government can do whatever the fun land they want. Problem was, building an airport out of a small island would be very expensive and will be for a very long time. So the government looked into Deep Bay, which happened to be right next to the old Ping San site, which means it is in the new territories again. Brilliant. This time though, there are a few key differences. While the site is still far away from the city center, this time it's next to water and the mountains will no longer be in the way. Hopefully that's enough for BOAC to stop whining about it. The government also learned to do better by making a series of concessions to the local villagers through consulting, giving employment priorities, and improving the livelihoods of those affected. Finally, to make sure China was happy, they held negotiations, settling issues not only relating to the villagers, but also ones about airspace conflicts. I mean, look how close the site is to the Chinese border. So close, in fact, that planes taken off and landing would likely enter Chinese airspace, something no foreign power would be fond of. So the British had to negotiate. A lot of work, but it paid off. After getting all the OKs they needed, in May of 1949, they announced to the world they're building Hong Kong's new airport at Deep Bay. It's going to be a world-class airport, one that is comparable in size to the 1950s London Heathrow, all to be completed before something terrible happens at the old airport. Time to get cracking. Oh no, what now? Oh, it's China, again but with a different government, run by Chairman Mao, who likes communism and doesn't like the West very much, and doesn't like Western planes flying over their land. <sighs> okay, let's negotiate. Again. Negotiate. Yoink. Look buddy, don't act like you don't know. We're currently at war with your so-called friend in Korea right now, and we know you've been helping them all along. Do you think we're in the mood for negotiations? Well, tough luck, Hong Kong. Guess you're gonna have to work with what you got. Just give it a few decades for the politics to cool down. I'm sure you can make the old airport work for a little longer. And hey, maybe by the time you finally announce your new airport project in 1989, there will be no controversial geopolitics involved. Nice looking terminal design there, Hong Kong. And you'll get it done by 1997?